Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. Today's lecture is going to be about artificial teeth and this lecture is given in the book Applied Dental Materials by John McCabe. Now before I move on to what artificial teeth are, let me give you an overview about classification of dentures. Dentures can be classified as partial or complete dentures. Uh, partial dentures are the ones that replace few missing teeth and complete dentures are the ones that replace all missing teeth in one arch or in both arches. Partial dentures can be removable or they can be fixed. Fixed partial dentures are the ones that cannot be removed by the patient but can be removed by the dentists and they are also known as bridge. Removable partial dentures are the ones that can be easily removed by the patient uh, when there is need to remove them and clean them and then they can be placed back into the old cavity by the patient. Removable partial dentures are further of two types, cast partial denture and uh, interim acrylic partial dentures. Now what are the different parts of or components of dentures? Uh, one of the main components of denture are the artificial teeth. Other components may include denture base. This is the denture base of a complete partial a complete denture which is pink in color and is made of out of acrylic and it's pink because it has to mimic the gingiva. And this is the a denture base for a removable partial denture. Then there are direct retainers which are also called as clasps in a removable partial denture and connectors and occlusal rests are also part of a removable partial denture. Now how should artificial teeth be? What are the requirements? The first requirement is good appearance. Ideally they should be indistinguishable from the natural teeth in their shape, color and translucency and they should offer a good matching because uh, the natural teeth, uh, the translucency of natural teeth, it varies from tip of the crown to, to gingiva, right? The tip of the crown uh, is usually translucent compared with the gingival area and this characteristic should be copied in the artificial teeth, right? So the first thing is good appearance. The second thing is uh, good attachment between artificial teeth and the denture base. The third one is compatibility. The artificial teeth should be of a material that is compatible with the base of the denture. Then the density. Uh, it is an advantage for the artificial teeth to be of lower density in order that they do not increase the weight of dentures unduly. And this increase in weight of dentures due to high density of any artificial teeth is more troublesome in maxillary teeth compared to the mandible in maxillary dentures compared to the mandible dentures. Then they should be strong and tough to resist fractures and they should be hard enough to resist abrasive forces in the mouth during cleaning and during mastication. Plus uh, they should not be so much hard that it hinders the grinding uh, with the dental burr when adjustments for occlusion are being made by the dentist at the chair side. So the ideal requirements are good appearance, good attachment, compatibility, density, which should be ideally be low, uh, strong, tough and they should be hard. Now what are the materials used for uh, artificial teeth? For manufacturing artificial teeth, there are two types of materials used, acrylic resins and porcelain. Now acrylic resin. Acrylic resin artificial teeth are produced in reusable metal molds. Now there are metal molds that are reusable and in those met th those metal molds are shaped according to the uh, our natural teeth incisors premolars canines and molars and they have different sizes right now how are artificial teeth uh, formed by which technique they can be uh, formed using dough molding technique or they can be formed by injection molding technique in which acrylic powder is softened by heating and forced into the mold under pressure Right, so these two are these two are the techniques which are used to fabricate artificial teeth uh, from acrylic resins. The resins are highly cross-linked in order to produce artificial teeth which are resistant to crazing. So they are more cross-linked compared to the uh, denture base, acrylic used in denture base. The main difference between the material those used for denture base construction and those used for um, artificial teeth is incorporation of tooth colored pigments rather than the pink ones. So the acrylic that is used to make artificial teeth has tooth color pigments in it and the acrylic that is used to make denture base has pink pigments in it because it has to mimic the gingiva. 
Now these artificial teeth are prepared in layers of different colors to give a shade that gradually lightens towards the incisal or occlusal portion and this gives a translucent appearance. So the gingival or cervical portion is opaque and the tooth during construction is layered with resin in a way that the incisal or occlusal portion is translucent. Now the gingival or the border portion may not be as highly cross-linked as the incisal or occlusal portion. Why? Because this is done to improve the chemical bond between the teeth and the denture base. So the, uh, the acrylic that is used uh, near the ridge lap area of the artificial teeth or near the uh, gingival area of the artificial teeth is not that cross-linked as it is in incisal area. Why? So that proper chemical bond or improved chemical bond can exist between the teeth and the denture base. If it be highly cross-linked, definitely the bond between the acrylic denture base and the teeth would get difficult. And fillers may be added to increase the resistance to wear. These are acrylic artificial teeth that are usually supplied in this form. Um, they have different sizes, they have different colors. And the wax that is uh, on which these teeth are displayed is the carding wax, this pink wax behind. Now the second material is porcelain. Artificial porcelain teeth are produced to standard shapes and sizes by using molds which are 30% larger than required size. Why? Because you know that there is firing shrinkage in porcelain. Right? The molds, so the molds are 30% larger to compensate for the firing shrinkage. Now Small dietetic holes or metal pins are incorporated in the base of porcelain teeth during their production. Anteriorly, uh, pins are incorporated and posteriorly dietetic holes or spaces are incorporated. What's the reason? Because we know that porcelain cannot chemically bind with acrylic denture base. So these mechanical attachments are used to give mechanical uh, bonding between the artificial teeth and the acrylic denture base. This is an anterior tooth. And this is a pin used for mechanical attachment. You can see this is also a, in, an illustration of an anterior tooth uh, with pin attached at the base. This is a premolar, and a di this dotted line shows a diatoric hole. Right? This is the ridge lap area of the artificial tooth that goes inside. Uh, the acrylic denture base. Right? What are the differences between acrylic and porcelain teeth? Acrylic teeth have natural appearance and they are aesthetic, but porcelain have better aesthetics compared to acrylics. They have better translucency, better shape, shape, shades and depth of color which can be achieved uh, and it makes them superior to acrylic. Coming to the hardness, acrylic teeth have 20 wickers hardness number and porcelain teeth have a wicker hardness number of 500. So they are harder than acrylic teeth. Acrylic teeth are easy to grind and polish and porcelain teeth are difficult to grind as it removes the glaze plus because they are harder. So acrylic teeth are less abrasion resistant which means they are softer, they are easy to grind so they are they have less abrasion resistant resistance and porcelain teeth have more abrasion resistance or they are more abrasion resistant. Uh, Acrylic teeth have high resilience and they are tough. Porcelain teeth on the other hand are very brittle. So if you drop an acrylic tooth and a porcelain tooth, there are more chances the porcelain tooth would chip off and would fracture because porcelain is very brittle, especially in thin sections. There is no clicking sound produced when teeth when acrylic teeth come in contact, but a clicking sound is produced when two porcelain teeth come in contact. There is chemical bonding of the acrylic teeth with the acrylic denture base and there is mechanical bonding of the porcelain teeth with the denture base. Coefficient of thermal expansion of acrylic is 80 parts per million and coefficient of thermal expansion of porcelain is 7 parts per million. Right? This mismatch of coefficient of thermal expansion with the base causes crazing and cracking. Modulus of elasticity is 2.5 gigapascal for acrylic teeth and 80 gigapascal for porcelain teeth. Right? So they are harder. Uh, compared to acrylic teeth and because of this reason they transmit higher forces to the supporting soft tissue than acrylic teeth so they should not be used where there is poor ridge support. 
density of acrylic teeth is 1.2 gram per centimeter cube and density of porcelain teeth is almost double 2.4 grams per centimeter cube acrylic teeth have high impact strength compared to porcelain teeth and porcelain teeth have low impact strength which means that when they will both of them will be dropped on the ground porcelain teeth have more chances to get fractured compared to acrylic teeth right acrylic teeth can be used in low inter ridge space when the ridge space when the space between maxillary and mandible ridge is low is less uh, you should prefer acrylic teeth because they're easy to grind away right uh, and porcelain teeth they require a greater inter ridge space or inter ridge area for use because you cannot grind those teeth from their ridge lap area that would damage the mechanical retentive feature plus they are difficult to grind as well so when there is a good space between maxillary and mandibular ridges you would opt for porcelain teeth and when there is poor ridge space you would opt for acrylic teeth low heat heat distortion temperature for acrylic teeth and high heat distortion temperature for porcelain teeth acrylic are insoluble in oral fluids but they are soluble in organic solvents porcelain teeth are inert and completely insoluble in any kind of solvents uh, slight dimensional change when stored in water to acrylic teeth and there is no dimensional change in water storage or permanent deformation on occlusal forces in porcelain teeth right so the choice the choice between acrylic and porcelain teeth depends on uh, Number one, the preference of dentist, and number two, the patient. Acrylic teeth are used opposite natural teeth or gold restorations in patients with poor ridge conditions or limited space. So, when you have a patient who has uh, opposing natural teeth, you would opt for acrylic teeth because if you use porcelain teeth in opposition to natural teeth, the porcelain teeth will grind your natural dentition, right? But in this case, when you are using acrylic teeth, this these acrylic teeth will not harm or grind your opposing natural dentition. Porcelain teeth may be used for patients with good ridge support, adequate space, and those who have good maxillary and mandible dentures. Right? Now, one thing to remember is that this is a picture of a crown. This is not an artificial tooth. Right? This is a crown. This is an oil ceramic or porcelain crown, and this is going to cap. An already present tooth that has been reduced in size and is going to get crown or covering due to any reason right we are not going into details so this is not an artificial tooth this is a crown which is going to replace uh, the missing portion of the tooth structure whereas artificial teeth they are basically a replacement for your missing teeth so there's a difference between a crown and an artificial tooth I hope this lecture uh, is easily understood. Um, this is this lecture is taken completely from um, BK Dental Materials and maybe a little bit from Craig Dental Materials. Please subscribe to the channel and share this video with your friends and colleagues. Thank you. Jazakallah khair.